In this series, we cover the many products, promos, and pack-ins available to support Dungeon Masters and players within the world of Eberron. And in this video, I'm covering more miniatures created for grid-based role-playing of characters and monsters over the many iterations of the game by Wizard of the Coast and licensees like WizKids and Gale Force 9. This is the Eberron Collector. On the day of mourning, armies from every belligerent nation were all operating within the borders of Syrie, the center and gem of Old Califar. Combatants hold spells and magical experiments were also being undertaken within the halls of House Kenneth facilities, and also likely within the other Dragonmark houses enclaves within the about-to-be-ruined nation. Magic was everywhere. Many of these Eldritch powers coalesced and gained a semblance of sentience, if not actually, life. Either due to the effects of the Day of Mourning, or according to some, the cause of it. This episode of the Eberron Collector is looking at miniatures that represent the nebulous denizens of the Mournland, the Living Spell. It was quiet for the first time in days. The enemy lines were far enough away, we thought we could see an approach with time to spare, so we began resting. I enjoyed the respite. They were rare in this so-called last war. I pulled the pot of tall off the small cook fire the officers allowed and poured myself a cup. I dipped my piece of salted meat into the steaming mug, trying to soften and warm it. They said it was Tribex, but who knew at this point? Then out of the corner of my eye, I saw her not even 30 yards from the dug-in line. She was a Valinar for the momentary view of her, though who could say if a mercenary with a warband of the traitorous self-styled Elf King. My training said the sudden reveal was from the ending of a spell of invisibility. And before I could shout an alarm, she waggled her fingers and mouthed some words in the strange way Arcanists do. Suddenly, me and the entire section were surrounded by yellowish-green fog. It burned at my eyes and caused my throat to start to close. The fog was heavy and sunk into our trench, where the sergeant and four others died slowly. I could hear their coughs, whispered wheezing at the air left their lungs. I crawled my way out of the trench, barely to cleaner air on the higher ground. I'm twice sure I would have been a goner if I hadn't passed out from the gas and left for dead as the enemy unit overran the position minutes later. And then again, if not for the halflings from Jurasco, healing up my lungs two days later, after another troop retook the position and found only me and Tenar left from my section. That's a possible story from a veteran of the last war's encounter with one of D&D's most famous spells, Cloud Kill. The spell goes all the way back to the original D&D black and white booklet in 1974 and has been included in basically every player's handbook since. The miniature on screen, the living spell Cloud Kill, is this horrible spell come to life and still roaming around in the Mornland. The miniature is produced by WizKids as an uncommon as part of the Eberron Rising from the Last War booster set in 2020 for the Icons of the Realms product line of pre-painted miniatures. It is on a large size base to match with the statistics of the creature as it appeared in the Eberron Rising from the Last War book, released just a few months earlier in 2019. The miniature is a very good representation of the illustration of the living spell in the book by Claudio Pozas. Living Cloud Kill has the distinct honor of being the only living spell stat block that appeared in every edition of Eberron. Versions of the stat block appeared in the Eberron campaign setting in 3.5, with this art as one of two example living spells. It had a challenge rating of 7. 
It was the only example of a living spell in 4th edition's Eberron campaign guide, where it was a level 19 brute, and in 5th edition, it is back down to challenge rating 7. Salvaging in the Mornland was dangerous work. Cherie knew that as well as I did, but it paid well. Our daughter would have been able to live a life neither of us enjoyed, at least with a few more months of work, but for that blasted ball of fire. I couldn't look into her eyes again unless I had achieved some form of retribution. How else could I call myself a wife or a mother? It's hard to tell time in that blasted land, but I must have followed that spear for days, deeper into the Mornland than I had ever been before. These living spells aren't terribly smart, but this one seemed to be able to always stay just out of reach and was tireless, but was staying close enough that I could pick up its trail whenever I needed rest. At the edge of my mind, I felt it was leading me into a trap. I had heard tales of the glass plateau from other salvagers, but the sight as I emerged over that ridge, I can barely form words. Everything melted and melting once more as the flames roamed the landscape. A tale of love lost and cold desire for vengeance. The miniature on screen is the living flaming sphere, like the one they hunted. A pre-painted miniature out of Wizard of the Coast, November 2006, set Blood War, where it was featured as a medium-sized uncommon. As with all miniatures from the D&D Miniatures game, the living flaming sphere was accompanied by a double-sided stat card. One side giving stats for role-playing using D&D 3.5 edition rules, and the adverse side with stats for the miniature skirmish game. The skirmish side has the added bonus of the flavor text of This spell, cast at the moment of the morning, now drifts over Ruin Sairi, incinerating all it encounters. The Death's Hanley miniature concept art that appears on both sides of the card is unique to this card and doesn't appear in any other publications. The role-playing stats that do appear on the card differ in many key ways from the stats used when the monster first appeared in an Eberron gamebook. So it says it's based on the living spell template in the Eberron campaign setting, instead of the stats in that adventure. That first appearance was in Shadows of the Last War. For full coverage and review of that adventure, a link will appear in the video's notes. However, the stat blocks in Shadows actually hews much closer to the rules set by the Living Spell template, and the one on the card actually takes a lot of liberties, adding to its hit dice, speed, challenge rating, among others. Though some of those changes actually should, according to the template, increase Living Spell's size from medium to large. This does display an important aspect of Living Spells, however. They are based on templates, that turn a regular spell into a creature. The template exists in both 3.5 and 5th editions. So while you could generate a living flaming sphere in 5th edition, it has not yet appeared in print. There was a version of the stats in 4th edition. Those appeared in dungeon issue number 175, which greatly expanded upon the options for living spell in 4th edition. However, it didn't have a template for creating a living spell, just guidelines on what to do to turn a spell in the game into a living spell. This article also tied the Living Flaming Sphere's point of origin to the Glass Plateau in the Mornland. The 4th edition version of the creature is a level 10 skirmisher, and the 3.5 versions were CR3 in the adventure and CR5 on the stat card. Collection of research notes from Provost Yana Yondel Nezoech. Third of Therendor, 997 YK, Day 8. I've located the first of the so called living spells that I wish to study. 
A group of these manifest bolts of lightning seem to congregate in a small valley just outside the dead gray mist. I will set up my camp just outside the edge, as close as I can to ease access to my subjects. 16th of Therindor, 997 YK, Day 21. I have confirmed that the manifest spells do respond to stimulus, and if I have to say, seem to delight in shocking the creatures I've summoned to prompt them. I have a few theories on a device to capture one for closer study as well. Twelfth of Dravago, 997 YK, Day 73. I haven't taken notes in, looks like eight days now. Uh, due to the flurry of new findings and my resulting excitement. First of all, the trap did work as intended. Thus, I have been able to discover the sentience I had observed is much more rudimentary than I had thought, and additional testing shows they do not feel fear or even show a pain response. I will follow up my failed attempt to lure a creature out of these blasted lands, once known as Siri, by transporting it out in a new mobile trap design I am putting together. I need to know if the creature will discorporate outside of the mist, and if not, if we can use these as an alternate power elemental binding. Our last miniature is a living spell, Lightning Bolt, a representation of the creatures the Provost captured. It's an uncommon, large-sized, pre-painted miniature from the WizKids Icons of the Realm set, Eberron Rising from the Last War. The Living Lightning Bolt is new to being started out in 5th edition's Eberron Rising from the Last War, and its Claudio Posas are directly inspired the form of its miniature. The stat block has the Living Lightning Bolt as challenge rating 5. As I mentioned, the Living Lightning Bolt is a new set of stats for 5th edition, but there was another lightning-themed living spell in an earlier form. In the Dungeon Numbers 175 article I mentioned in the previous entry, The Chill Spark. I'm sure that spell doesn't sound familiar to you. And this is not because it's based on an obscure 4th edition wizard power. It's actually based on two obscure 4th edition sorcerer powers, Breath of Winter and Leaping Lightning. This article greatly expanded on the options in the campaign guide with a few more basic living spells, like the Flaming Sphere we talked about last entry, but it also added a number that were combinations of two spells. That same idea was used in 3rd edition as well, in the Monster Manual 3. For example, Glitter Fire a combination of the Fireball and Glitter Dust spells. So, these are the three miniatures available to represent living spells that have been available for purchase. The Flaming Sphere now can generally only be found on the secondary market, the other two are still widely available in Eberron Rising from the Last War boosters in hobby stores everywhere. I'd also really like to see additional Living Spell minis created by WizKids in future sets. Living Burning Hands also appears in the Eberron book, and I think would look quite attractive crafted by WizKids modelers. There are also a number of Living Spells that appear in some of the Forgotten Realms adventures, Icewind Dale, Rime of the Frost Maiden, and Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Those would also be a great source of stats and art to base miniatures on for additional living spells to populate your Mornland. So that is a wrap. I want to ask for feedback on the bits of thematic fiction written for this video. Did you enjoy them, or would you prefer I always stick to lore about the miniatures I am featuring, or about something adjacent to it. Though I do have to admit, the existing lore on living spells was pretty thin beyond what I covered in the introduction to this video. I'd also like to thank my friends who guested in this video, voicing those short bits of fiction. 
our Cloud Kill Survivor was my first ever DM and still runs a game I play in now, AJ Curry. He asked me to mention his YouTube channel, even if it is infrequently used. Second is another close friend, Andy, who tracked flames through the Mornland. They wanted me to mention their thoroughly ungaming related Instagram, Andy Loves Art. And finally, our cold researcher was read by Apollo 11, someone who has played in or run more than half of the D&D games I've ever played in. He has a personal blog which touches on gaming, tech, and his own life at apollo11.com. And that's it, other than mention the next planned video, which is going to be the second episode of Aberon's Monster Manual, A to Z. Though that could be interrupted by some quick coverage of the new DM's Guild Eberron book coming from Keith Baker. As of the time of this recording, the announcement of an announcement was just made, so depending on what and how much is released, I may cover that which should take less time than a standard video. Please get subscribed so you don't miss out. The channel also has an Instagram account with channel news and a regular feature showing shots of Eberron-related miniatures.